I'd like to start by thanking UNEC, the co-organizers of this event, as well as our generous sponsors, Ericsson, and the European Association of Automotive Suppliers, CLEPA. Uh, so 10 years ago, as I said, uh, I had the pleasure to deliver the opening remarks for the very first edition of this event. I think that uh, 2012 is the wrong year, as uh, quoted by my colleague Rang Ha. And 2002 is not correct uh, neither. Yeah. I think it's 2005, not 2007. <laughs> if we talk about 10 years, we really have to calculate. So the IT is not very strong in mathematics, <laughs> although we are very strong in statistics. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, it's true that uh, I delivered uh, the opening remarks for the very first edition of this event. I have found memories of that symposium, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers of the Geneva Motor Show for the continuous support they have offered us over the last uh, 10 years. So ladies and gentlemen, this year ITU is uh, celebrating its 150th anniversary. This is a tribute to the extraordinary innovation of the global ICT community over the past century and a half and the crucial role that ITU has played in being an impartial and a neutral platform for bringing all stakeholders together. Our 150th anniversary will be a celebration of past achievement as well as an opportunity to look forward to see how we can best position ourselves to serve the future development of the ICT ecosystem. The ICT ecosystem is always growing in scale and uh, complexity, compounded by the accelerating convergence, convergence of technologies and industry sectors. Intelligent transport systems, ITS, provide an excellent case study of uh, convergence, and in particular, the challenges related to coordinating this convergence. The ICT and automotive uh, sectors are both enormous industries that have, to a large degree, developed independently. The technologies employed by the two sectors are converging, but mechanisms to coordinate the various elements of this convergence have not developed at the same pace. And that is the purpose of this symposium to open lines of communication, offering a platform for discussion on how the ICT and automotive sectors can better coordinate their contributions to the era of connected road transportation. Efficient collaboration will be essential in realizing the potential of ITS to improve road safety, reduce emissions, and increase the mobility of the elderly and uh, persons with uh, disability. Today, however, ITS technology is uh, raising a height of supporting standardization activity and uh, regulatory reform. And it remains a significant challenge to engage the immediate relevant players in an impartial standardization effort. IT is a unique public-private partnership that has been successful in providing an open, neutral platform to build consensus on the policy and the te technical considerations crucial to the development of the ICT ecosystem. ITU standards already provide specification for radio communication between cars and infrastructure, and the standards to reduce driver distraction are under development. But I have to be fair that uh, I got uh, some statistics that uh, ICT may also increase the dangers of risk because people now try to <coughs> to communicate by mobile, mobile phone while they're driving. So that uh, I heard a uh, recent report from uh, US uh, statistics that uh, this uh, accident caused by this communication is, is, is if it's not the number one, it's number two of the cause of uh, road accident. So that one we have to also to 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 take serious uh, measures to work on those uh, 
potential risk areas. Furthermore, allocating dedicated spectrum to ITS is the subject to a proposal on the agenda of this year's World Radio Communication Conference, WRC 15, which will be taking place in Geneva during November, the whole month. But of course, here, you know, this, uh, I think that it's not uh, compared with some other uh, transport industries, like uh, aviation. I think that our road transport is not uh, as uh, terrible as uh, aviation, because this year, you know, we were concentrated on the plane tracing uh, topics, because last year, uh, several airplanes lost, and uh, still one and not found yet, so that is a big concern of everybody. Luckily, we do not have similar problems in our car transport, you know, that uh, if car has accident, we can always find a car. But airplane disappeared, and one day airplane, we still did not have any chance to understand where they are, you know, this is a new hint. So this is a big concern, and uh, we will look at that issue. And hopefully, you know, car transportation will not uh, uh, when is that far? Go to that far to, 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 to that point. But anyhow, still, you know, that uh, spectrum be used for uh, car, uh, road transportation will be somehow, to some degree, uh, linked with this uh, uh, spectrum requirement from transportation systems. So these are activities undertaken under the auspices of the ICT industry. And uh, the challenge today is to determine how the separate requirements of the automotive industry can also be accommodated. ICT automotive uh, convergence raises a number of uh, complex questions around road safety and uh, data ownership and uh, protection, not to mention the uncertainty surrounding insurance uh, liability in the case of accident involving automatic driving. Yeah, again, something similar. So at WRC 15 this year in November, we will talk about a spectrum requested by unmanned aircraft traffic. I think that we are also talking about unmanned route <laughs> transport, so that uh, we may not have a driver, or we have driver, just to talk to people by mobile phone, but leave the machine to drive the car. So the, anyhow, that is some kind of the in a potential of development, we might have to look at it as well. That is unmanned driving <laughs> transport on route. So car makers expected to have a highly automated driving on the route by 2020, but that will depend on enabling regulations that has yet to emerge. Such is the nature of the real world of ICTs, which advances with such speed and intensity that the standardization and the regulation often for a few steps behind. So one advantage here is that we have anticipated this need for collaboration. ITU has a productive relationship with the ENGCE World Forum for the harmonization of vehicle regulations. And together we have enabled constructive dialogue between our communities. We recognize that there is still much to be done, but we are very appreciative of this partnership, which I believe puts us in a strong position to support the intersection of automobiles and ICTs. So let me therefore conclude my short remark by thanking the participants here for your support of IT's work in this arena. It is thanks to you that we can all look forward to the future networked car.